Um, breakout group four was uh, the discussion on aid effectiveness. We had uh, three presentations. Um, Brian gave us uh, his take on what had happened at the Busan uh, High Level Forum on Aid Effectiveness uh, at the end of November last year. Uh, Samira gave us a um, presentation on uh, uh, research that Oxfam had done on aid effectiveness in West Africa and uh, and its impact, and Steve, uh, who led the who led the development of the um, knowledge piece on policy coherence that was done in preparing for the Busan process. Um, <coughs> Steve gave us a presentation on his take on aid effectiveness now uh, post Busan, uh, and we had <coughs> a lively discussion. I don't think we got anywhere near. Uh, as far into the subject as, uh, 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 as we would have liked to. But uh, the key messages from the group are <coughs> basically Busan, uh, post Busan, the focus of aid effectiveness work <coughs> is going to be more on results, accountability and ownership rather than on the harmonization uh, and, uh, and, and alignment issues. Um, the second key finding is, is that in the case of agriculture and rural development, we, f we find that uh, the alignment agenda actually is somewhat illusory. Um, uh, and that is largely because uh, in, in many developing countries the, um, the feeling would be that the, uh, the policies and strategies around agriculture and rural development tend to be very broad and not particularly focused. So um, anything you're having can fit, in under the, uh, can fit in under the national policy. It's difficult to come up with an approach to agriculture or rural development which wouldn't be aligned with the policies at the moment. So going forward, there's probably a need to be uh, uh, to, to look at national policies and how well they are focused um, uh, in terms of what they wish to achieve and in terms of who their target groups are. Um, and then the third key message is, is that uh, um, post Busan, I think a key area, a key area of work for uh, the uh, um, for the platform uh, is actually to um, work on shared uh, country level results frameworks. There's a lot of talk about results but in the end uh, the, the, the frameworks need to be developed and the results approaches and processes developed uh, at country level because that's where management for development results uh, actually happens. Um, but we do need to, th those results frameworks need to be able to, capable to, of delivering for all stakeholders. So donors uh, are required to show results to their domestic constituencies of their, of their development assistance to agriculture and rural development. Uh, um, partner countries together with donors at country level need to have results information in order to manage programs to, to, um, to, to specify them, make sure they have the focus we talked about, but also to monitor the delivery and, uh, and their impact and adjust them as necessary, the management for development results part of it. And also partner governments need results in order to be a, accountable to their own citizens and, uh, and to the target groups. So this should be um, an area of work for the, for the platform uh, going forward. Um, <clears throat> What can we do, what can platformers do to ensure that aid effectiveness delivers on ARD outcomes? Again, um, post Busan, there is a, a six month period in which the uh, rather generic agreement that was reached at Busan is turned into something more substantive, concrete and measurable. So there's a six month process and in that uh, the mechanisms for the new global partnership for effective development cooperation will be put in place uh, and also uh, the commitments that were made in Busan will be turned into to measurable results and indicators. And that's a, um, uh, that's a process that we should seek to try to influence and inform. And we can do that by developing the existing work that the platform has done in a number of areas. The knowledge pieces that have been done, particularly the ones on policy coherence and on uh, funding for, uh, for agriculture and rural development can be built on to feed into that process. Uh, and also uh, the work that has been done, um, the source book that has been prepared uh, by World Bank and FAO uh, on agriculture culture indicators would uh, feed into that. Uh, we should also think about trying to promote, uh, in going forward on the aid effectiveness agenda, try to promote agriculture and rural development as a tracer sector. The tracer sector at the moment has been health up until the moment. And aid effectiveness in sectors like health and education is a very different beast to what it is in agriculture and rural development. So maybe we should try to actually get some consensus behind, uh, behind that idea. Um, and as I said before, we should promote results. Uh, as as I said in the beginning, sorry, the, um, the focus is, on, is going to be on results, on accountability and on ownership.
leadership. And we should, we should see results frameworks and country level uh, um, approaches to, to, to managing for development results as ways of deepening ownership uh, in, in countries so that national ownership actually uh, involves results that are defined in an inclusive way by target groups uh, and, and that there are results around policy processes that ensure uh, that policies are deeply owned uh, at country level. Uh, so that these results frameworks, they can uh, strengthen accountability, equity um, and, and inclusiveness. And I think there was quite a big discussion around the, the, these issues and um, uh, you know, there's the feeling that we need indicators that are a bit more detailed and a bit more sophisticated than some of the ones that are being used already. The example was given of, of, indi of, of situations where a, a, an important result indicator is the budget going into agriculture. An important output indicator is agricultural growth. Well, really, that tells us very little about what is actually happening and who is benefiting. And we need more, uh, we need more detail than that. And we need to look at indicators that aren't just in the agriculture agriculture sector and particularly not just in, in, in uh, agricultural production. We also need to be aware of the kind of um, dialectic between or, 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 or um, um, competition sort of between the focus on uh, output growing agricultural output and getting it for getting it efficiently on the one hand and issues of, around equity and livelihoods on the other hand and th that needs to be that that kind of dichotomy or that potential difference needs to be clear or, or clarified and the resolution of it needs to be evident in in, uh, in results frameworks I think also we need to be able to buy into collective results this is really a problem that donors want to be able to uh, identify a result that they, that their cooperation achieved, that their program achieved, and we really need to strengthen more the ability of donors to buy into collective results. And then the last slide is, what can we, um, uh, how can we be better at networking and knowledge sharing to support this? So I suppose obvious things, you know, we should share our own results, frameworks and approaches and critique them and identify where the gaps are, given the things we've talked about already, and how can we work towards more complete, comprehensive results, frameworks, and ones that we can share. You know the commonality between um, between our approaches. Um, we should try to work towards common uh, positions. Uh, as I said on the on the item earlier on, on the post Busan process, common positions for our countries as donors on uh, how agriculture and rural development can be uh, outcomes can be furthered through um, uh, through the uh, indicators uh, and the firming up of the of the post busan aid effectiveness process and given that we're talking about country level results frameworks and inclusiveness beyond governments uh, in in those uh, in those results frameworks we really need to be able to access inputs from people uh, at country level so we need to be able to network with civil society and with partner country governments as well if we're going to do work on this which isn't just another thing dropped uh, on, on on country level so that's it thank you very much Thank you very much and thank you for your presentation, really excellently done. One point that we briefly discussed based on an information that Samira gave, namely that donor agencies are doing trainings for their own people, for their own colleagues as to mainstream the whole agenda you know, within the organization. Uh, there was also a proposal to say this should be strengthened also with partners, more donor engagement needed, engagement by development partners in local debates and processes. And often we talk about governments. But uh, we have to really divide the government into Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Agricultural Development, and many, uh, many colleagues in the line ministries are not informed, sufficiently informed about the processes that are ongoing and where they can engage. And as we all know, it's going around, if you don't sit at the table, you might be on the menu. So uh, in this case, uh, I think the Global Donor Platform could do much more in talking about how we could mainstream and strengthen the capacity of our partners and what are the results, what are the approaches. And I think GTZ, I know that GIZ, sorry, GIZ has a, a major program running in capacity building uh, on this issue and the global, the, the global mechanism does the same. Thank you.
next question. What I'd like to do now is to open up to the floor. You've heard four sets of messages, four sets of recommendations for what platform members can do to take forward strengthening resilience agenda and how we can be better at networking and knowledge sharing. Is there anything you particularly want to endorse or comment on? What's missing? What's the priority? I open it to the floor. Mark. To pick up on the last session, I think it's a very welcome comment to hear that we can look beyond food production alone as a measure of agricultural development success. I think what is changing in the global debate is we're moving beyond the straight um, food security equals food production and into food security equals food access equals equity equals all those issues. And that does require a whole new set of parameters to measure. And this is something we're grappling with and I'm sure the, the platform is grappling with that we don't have those measures yet. And I think we need a, a consensus on what are realistic measures to bring as well, particularly if we're dealing at the policy level rather than the, say, local village level in terms of what kinds of behavioral changes, attitudinal changes, policy shifts can we show are happening in these, in these measures? And, and how do we track them amongst all of us and bring that evidence together? So I think it's a very important point. Thanks, Mark. Monique. Thank you all for the presentations and the suggestions. Um, I, the one thing that's one of the things that struck me was uh, in the report back of the aid effectiveness group. Um, I think that um, that the issue, at least what I understood from the presentation, was that there was a strong move towards looking at issues such as results, ownership, and transparency at the country level, rather than trying to get some kind of generic let's say, understanding of what we should be trying to achieve. And I think that this is very relevant. I mean, the country contexts are so very different, and um, I think it's, uh, I would endorse that recommendation. Maybe a second comment about the, um, the production side. Um, I think it would, we didn't make it an explicit recommendation, but I think it might be good uh, not just looking at production, but looking at the whole value chain approach and the role of the public and the private sectors to see if and how the global platform, donor platform, could actually engage with the private sector and especially with, let's say, um, multinationals which are playing such a dominant role in the whole food supply chains nowadays. So if we could find a kind of counterpart group to engage with, I think it would provide a lot of useful insights. Thank you. Yes, please, Barbara. Uh, back to the topic of aid effectiveness, uh, uh, you've talked about, um, or we've come up with the idea to uh, look more into the partner countries, and uh, there are several partner countries who are uh, swifting, uh, who are at the same uh, time our development cooperation partners, but they are developing a new role, being global players and also being global donors. So that for me raises the question, how long can we keep on talking about global donor platform if these new players, these new kids on the block are not involved in any way in uh, our initiative? Okay. I'm talking about China, Brazil, India and all these countries. Okay. Yes, please, Damien. Thank you. I'd like to come back on, on the issue on, on, uh, of food price volatility. I think we've had it very high on the agenda in the G20 and in the Committee on Food Security, but uh, I, mean, I wasn't there in the G20, but at the Committee of Food Security I was kind of disappointed about the, the level of the debate. I think it was very ideological and we were not really able to talk about, about substance because I think Actually, people were not really aware of what we were talking about and what, what's working, what's not working. And so I think, I mean, from what I hear from the, from the breakout session, uh, there is some, some study, there is some information. So I would really recommend, I mean, the, it was one of the recommendations of the group to share more about that. Risk management tools, we talk about, a lot about, about them, but we actually know very little about them. So I think that there is definitely some scope of uh, further study and further information exchange. So I really welcome the recommendation of the group on, on that one. Great, thank you. 
Yes, Christian. Just a very quick comment on the uh, climate change group. Thanks, Fiona, very much for, for the presentation. Uh, one point I would like to make, you said um, the group agreed not to wait for FCCC. I agree, I agree with that. Let's go, early action is important. However, it, it's also important for us to, to discuss uh, the results of FCCC and the upcoming debate now, uh, what happens on the Substar, what happens actually with agriculture. And I think this would, for me, would be a very useful and helpful debate. I don't want to preempt your anybody's uh, negotiation position but you know to come up with some ideas at least constructive ideas in the context might be of, of interest because we're a mix of bilaterals and multilaterals and we could really exchange some uh, constructive views on the future because it will be on the agenda of the FCCC. Thanks Christian. Fiona can I invite you to respond? Thank you and um, we did have some discussion on that, and I, I probably didn't, I didn't do it justice. We didn't have a chance to talk about it, but um, a number of uh, members of the group made the point that they are in the process of developing uh, submissions for the UNFCCC. Um, so for those who weren't in our group, um, one of the outcomes of Durban was a, a request from the UNFCCC for, for parties and uh, organizations that were observers at Durban to make uh, submissions to them by March 5th on what a work program could look like on agriculture if there was to be a work program. So uh, CCAFs in particular is preparing a work program. Um, I think a number of other members mentioned that they would be. I think uh, the conversation we had around that issue was not an attempt to have, uh, that there, there wasn't necessarily value in having a platform position on a work program given there are various perspectives but that at very least we should share anything that we might submit um, and CCAS in particular was, was offering to work with others on uh, providing technical support if, uh, if uh, groups were interested. So we, we did have that conversation and absolutely I think the point was I wasn't meaning to, uh, by no means mean to trivialize the importance of UNFCCC. I think the discussion was more that we have to work, we have to do more than wait for the international negotiations. So yes, keep supporting, but, but do more. Is that, does that answer your question? Thanks, Fiona. Yes, please, Anne and Anne Thanks. Just a, a point on the food price volatility one. I think it's a very important thing in, in when thinking about price volatility in developing countries to, to differentiate between um, price volatility that is uh, domestically generated and price volatility that comes from the global markets. And the impression I got from the presentation was that it seemed to be focused more on on, uh, on, on price volatility in, in global markets. And I think the, the experience, the evidence from a, a lot of... Uh, Poor, develop, poor developing countries, certainly in, 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 in East, Eastern and Southern Africa, is that the, there is very substantial uh, instability in prices, regular instability, so I don't know if you can call it volatility, but it's regular instability that dwarfs the movements on, uh, on, the, uh, on the global markets. Uh, and the drivers of it are domestic and are, and are about really, in, really badly functioning food staple markets in, in, in those countries. And, uh, you know, measures to address that would be really, really useful on, on a long-term basis. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, uh, three quick points. One is that um, what I'm, I guess what I'm not hearing is a, an, a, an overall sense coming out is um, um, something that we discussed earlier, which is and, and in the groups yesterday about um, over the coming year, um, where a sort of key message is coming out, and I'm, I'm thinking particularly around the Rio summit, which has been brought up several times. Um, um, so just wanting to sort of put that back up there, and also in the context of the, the mention that was made, I think, by John Barrett of the Sustainable um, Development Goals discussion, and where the food, food security and ag agenda sort of sits within that. And um, um, certainly in the context of Rio, that's something we as Oxfam are thinking about um, you know, trying to have some, some sort of clear and strong messages around um, linking perhaps to the point made at the opening about the need for sort of broader sustainability criteria. Um, so that was one point. Um, the, the second point is um, 
was kind of having a side conversation after the breakout groups that, that um, I'm not quite sort of sure where, where it sits and I guess um, the issue of gender equity is part of all the discussions but um, where I'm feeling that, that, that not enough has been said is around issues of how um, agricultural extension information services actually get to reach um, the, 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 the whole population of farmers and particularly women farmers and I think there's a huge opportunity there in terms of the resilience and sustainability agenda given what we know about how um, agricultural services are not functioning or haven't functioning or certainly haven't functioned to the benefit of um, the vast majority of smallholders so um, I would hope that somewhere that gets taken up in, in the agenda I think is, is a huge kind of opportunity particularly with Rio coming up and, and so forth um, thank you Responses to Sally's question around this lead up to Rio. Fiona? I can, I can say something and then ask other members of my group to, to say a little more. Um, we did have a number of conversations around you know, what should we be doing in, in the lead up to Rio. Um, in that group, and, and maybe this is um, my fault as a facilitator, but we, there was not a huge appetite for. Um, uh, very strong engagement as a platform. What where we were coming out was sharing our, exp our different experiences of engagement in the lead up to Rio, sharing what what we know and what we are doing. Um, and there was we did have a conversation about the importance of, of clear messaging and in our case particularly linking uh, climate smart agriculture to a green economy or green growth. Um, I think Fowles had a had a line which is no no green growth without climate smart ag. Um, there were some we had some conversations around that, but um, again we, we didn't take that we didn't really have time to take that further apart from recognizing that it is a huge opportunity and it was part of the discussion about don't only stay in the climate change debate, take it into a broader debate, which is why Rio is, is important. And we just didn't come to too many conclusions about that. And sadly, we did not have a conversation about gender equity yet, but we're not finished. <laughs> Thanks, Fiona. Yes, please, Mark. Um, we did have a conversation about gender equity. Uh, so just to flag also that we have a conference coming up in the middle of March in, in New Delhi, 13th to 15th, explicitly on strengthening the role of women in agriculture and the role of agricultural services for women, the, the two ends of the, the spectrum, if you like. Because this is, is an absolutely fundamental agenda that has been missed all the time. We pay lip service in many programs. We're, what we're trying to do is really rethink who are the farmers, who are we seeking to serve, and how do we rebuild structures that meet their needs rather than working the other way around. So, uh, yes, it's happening, and you're all very welcome and very invited. Um, direct link to Rio, I'm not sure, um, for the same reasons Fiona's just said. One of the things that slightly disturbs us about Rio is, is the, the bean feast principle of, will anything we do get drowned in the the mass of what's going on, and, and that is a, a problem unless we've got a very clear, very simple, unified message. Yes, Christian. Sorry to take the floor again, but uh, there's one point I forgot in, in which presentation, but there was this kind of follow-up on portfolios and portfolio reviews. And I think this is one key element that we continue. We have been working with the World Bank, with IFAD, with the African Development Bank on portfolio reviews, in our case, uh, uh, degradation of land and, and activities in this regard. However, this is very much linked to the collection of data and the, the production of data on economic uh, valuation of land and with the initiative that unfortunately couldn't present yesterday, namely the economics of land degradation. I think in this context it is very important that uh, the, the Global Donor Platform kind of takes a look at, at these activities because we're building, so to say, the base, the base for arguments with the ministries of finance in the countries based on this, on this work. I think uh, uh, this was very encouraging when I, when I read that. Thank you. John, please. Thanks very much. Um, a few reflections. Are you looking ahead to the, to the year ahead? I mean, Rio was what, June, I think, uh, the latest date. Um, what we're we going to do in August? <laughs> 
we'll, you know, we have Busan behind us, we'll have Durban behind us, we'll have Rio, which will be somewhat of a success, maybe not everything we hope, but we'll be sitting there in August thinking, okay, what going ahead? Um, and what, are the, what are the big challenges and opportunities that we're going to be facing once we've got Rio behind us? Um, one thing we haven't mentioned at all um, so far this week is the, sort of the global economic crisis. Um, in Europe facing challenges in the Eurozone, etc., etc. Um, I think we're all facing a world of austerity. Now, I think things are going to happen in the next six months that are probably going to have us having quite different conversations uh, in 12 months' time. But it's, it's a very uncertain world looking ahead. You know, we don't know what the next big issue on the, on the global stage is going to be and how it's going to engage the attention of our political leaders or the public who are the constituency for what we do. Um, so I think we're all challenged with uh, trying to say, well, what's the big issue we need to grapple in the, in the next year? Um, we, we're really not quite sure. And there are a number of things, whether it's climate change, Rio, sustainable development goals, economic crisis, energy security, that are up there and they're all going to interact. Um, I think that whatever we do, it has to hang together in a coherent way. And for me, the, the, um, the point of, of um, coming together is in moving from global to local. At the end of the day, we've all got to continue doing business as donors in our partner countries. And it's at the level of country strategies uh, and, and their traction with the lives of poor farmers that I think we, we need to focus uh, and, and find focus in, in the year coming ahead. So I would encourage us to continue to put a lot of effort into... Um, organizing and coordinating our thinking and our actions around country level delivery. Certainly when I came into the platform four or five years ago, um, the, 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 one of the main um, rationales for the global donor platform was the fact that the whole sector was neglected. Um, and that our, our raison d'etre was to mobilize political interest and funding for the sector. We're actually in a very different place today, uh, with AFSI now nearly four years behind us when 20-odd billion dollars was pledged. Um, not all delivered yet, but much of it. I mean, we do have uh, quite a different um, uh, landscape in terms of what's happening in our partner countries. And I think we should be much more concerned about um, getting delivery um, and, and making sure that what we are doing and have pledged to do really delivers results on the ground for countries which are serious about tackling hunger. Um, and may, maybe in a year of huge uncertainty, we, we should um, concentrate much more on, on um, yeah, delivering what we've already pledged to do um, and doing it in an effective way. Thank you. Yes, Fiona. <laughs> Thank you. I, I promise not to take the floor again, but just, just to, to John's point, I was thinking exactly that this morning in terms of the broader economic crisis, and um, we just issued a report today, which was covered in a number of papers today, but just very, very briefly. Um, the headline is World Bank warns emerging nations, developing countries should take steps to plan for a global and ec economic meltdown on a par with 2008-09. If the, Euro if the European sovereign debt crisis escalates, um, predicting significant slower global growth in 2012 than it expected last summer, uh, economists were saying global growth would be about four percentage points. I mean, this, this is really, <laughs> we were horrified when we first saw this coming out. I think it has huge implications for what we would, what we can expect in the next 12 months, and we shouldn't, we shouldn't ignore it. 